Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to another episode of my Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition SSHIP Byzantine Roman Series. We're starting episode 19. Here today, continuing our war against Venice and our reconquest of the Italian peninsula under the reign of Emperor Alexios the Great. We're still dealing with the Fatimids down in Egypt and we are at war with the Seljuks in the Far East. So if you'd like to send it that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. The Emperor is now 70. He's not going to be with us for much longer. The oldest I had was 75. Even co-emperor Jonas is 48. He's married a French princess and has a bunch of heirs, which is fantastic. So the Caminos line will continue. We've also got another male line here, which is probably going to die out, die out unfortunately. But um, yeah, it's a shame some of those other branches of the family tree haven't and maybe it will not marry off. All right, so... We've got a decision here to either go for Verona or Venice. I think I'm going to go for Venice. We've also assembled an army in Cairo to try and finish off the last of the Egyptians in the, um, well, Egyptian slash Sudan territory. And we've also got co-emperor Jonas here in the Far East. Now the Turks and the Seljuks have moved up a army here, which we're going to have to deal with. Oh, nice. We got rid of their assassin. They have deployed a lot of agents in and around us. Okay, we can't go for their general there. Alright, let's fight this one. And we do outnumber them quite a bit. Yikes. But we're coming up against their eight-star faction leader. 20 years of governance. Oh, my. Vali. Gosh. Okay, the pious. 67. Yikes. Okay, so... Although we do outnumber them significantly, the most casualties we've s sustained in this series is from skirmisher, heavy Turkic factions. And they've got a lot of them here, along with some decent spearmen, Persian archers. So let's fight this one upon the battlefield and hopefully we can get the win. Let's go. Okay, looking at the battlefield here, this is a bizarre one. There's a lot of buildings on the field. We do have additional reinforcements coming in. There's like a farm and there's a, a mill. They've actually deployed back behind the mill for some defensive cover. So we're going to have to crawl on up. Okay, we're finally here. It just took us so long to get here. I might have to cut that. All right, so fighting is now broken out. They've sort of lured us out into this open field. Most of my army is made up of Byzantine spearmen. We do have some Persian swordsmen and Georgian infantry. We do have a bunch of our own Turkoman archers, seven or so. So we're going to have to make sure they get their firing patterns well. We'll have to protect the Emperor's nephew, Jonas, who will eventually be Jonas II. Okay, let's restructure this. Let's angle you. But already, we're taking significant damage. Some of my spearmen do have bronze slash silver plating, so that will protect them. But already, the balance of power is about a 50-50. This is going to be an incredibly tight battlefield. Okay, so just make sure to get those off. So, focusing on the Italian provinces still. Venice are bunkered in. Venice, Verona, and Milan. So we'll start chipping away against them. Trying not to overextend too much. As conquering and assimilating cities just takes so much time. You have to be slow and methodical in this mod. We've got a small contingent still dealing with the Fatimids in Egypt. And Emperor Jonas, co Emperor Jonas here is dealing with this Eastern campaign. This is where he's probably going to be more renowned for. Even though the Roman Empire didn't push this far into Persia, we've already got so many military assets over here, we might as well just try and continue to throw back the Seljuks if they come in. Maybe we should have got a marriage alliance with them early on. 
Okay, so my reinforcements are coming, but they're actually deploying from behind, which isn't too bad, but we might need to put them to not an aggressive or defensive stance. Maybe just shoot out. It does have some archers in it. Oh my god. So some of my spearmen are wavering a little bit. They must get a buff. Seljuk slash Turkic factions to skirmishes because they consistently just absolutely shred me. <laughs> okay, still holding relatively for now. Just need to mix up our firing patterns with our archers. Yeah, ideally, from what I found in this Roman series, if you do end up playing as Byzantium, I would highly recommend getting your ass, uh, your archers from the mercenary pool. They're just so good. <laughs> they are expensive, yeah. But it's worth it. These tier 1 spearmen aren't actually too bad as well, like tactically. They're quite cheap. That's the main thing they got going for them. Only half the enemy force remains. Okay, I think we're going to be able to hold on here, but our spearmen have taken a bit of a battering. We're going to have to reform this line. Slightly. Oh, unfortunately, some archers got caught there. But we're going to be able to throw them back. And then hopefully we can be able to push for Tabriz, I think. I think it's in Georgia. Also, I do think that um the Georgians actually got pushed back quite a bit. The Seljuks not only crushed half of what the Abbasid Caliphate controlled along with us, but they've actually pushed super far north into Georgia. Or well, maybe that Azerbaijan region. To be fair, isn't Azerbaijan and some of that coastal Iranian... Uh, sorry, that like... Yeah, a little bit coastal, I guess, because the, the Caspian Sea's there. I guess it's that western Iranian territory. Isn't there a lot of like ethnic Turks there? I think I've heard that before. Okay, so we've gotten rid of their general. Jeez, that's another thing as well. He was an eight-star commander. So they probably did even better. Alright, I think we've got him on the back foot here now. We need to push this advantage and go. Fortunately, we don't have too much cavalry, but... We're just going to have to send Jonas. Even he's been taking some pot shots. He's been getting dinged a bit. Those Persian archers are still very much holding. is in our favor if we remain true and wholehearted victory is in our jeez okay now right our reinforcements here nice let's give out some more attack orders nice okay I think we're good it's like 95% in our favor that battlefield was really quite cool a lot of mills and stuff which is surprising Just the terrain. I thought it would have been vastly different. This Caucasus territory seems to be a lot more fertile. Nice. Let's continue on. We lost a thousand. Yikes. Um, we're going to release because I wouldn't mind peace with them. Okay, so... Oh my god. Dismounted Ghulams. Some of that heavy infantry. Yikes. So one of their generals came back. Okay, let's try and run them down. We'll release again. You should really get rid of them if you need to tactically crush a bunch of units then to push on, but I think now that we're sort of cutting them off, like, yeah, it seems like only a little bit of this territory is theirs. So Georgia owns that. Yeah, they have pushed up in towards... Azerbaijan. 
So I am interested in maybe making peace with them. We haven't taken any territory, we've just thrown back a lot of their advances. Right, it's probably not a bad idea as well to finally start building some watchtowers. <laughs> we're getting to the stage of the campaign we're actually financially going to be able to. For quite some time, it's just been too far and too much out of our reach. Okay, we're still dealing with some economic problems here, even with full stacks. Alright, um, let's go for Venice, I think. Venice itself is going to be a more valuable city. Verona is a massive castle. Look how much they've built it up. That's quite impressive. We could maybe draw some units out. Can I besiege it from here? And technically the HRE are at war with Venice, so they could come down and help us, potentially. We do have a peace with Pisa, and hopefully that can last for quite some time. Alright, things looking okay in the peninsula for now. Okay, so... Unfortunately, that army got attacked. Where did that come from? I don't know. Okay, so they haven't moved out any big armies yet. Okay, it seems like... Oh no, they have moved some out. Why are they going for this small unit I had sieging Venice? Bit weird. We only lost 50. I guess that wasted a bunch of movement. Couple of costly armies. Yeah, yeah. First tournaments. Letter of Prester John. Alright. Making the wind work. Oh, okay, so that's like a building. A faction leader is old. Yes, I know. Fire in the Umayyad Mosque. Right. Rioting in Cairo. Typical. Death stalks the land in Constantinople. Constantinopolis. Hey, we've got a coming of age. Pamphronos. Kaminos. Pamphronos. What type of stupid name is that? That is the, uh, <laughs> Co-Emperor Jonas's son -in -law. And he's Catholic. Oh. Oh, that might be really bad, actually, in hindsight. Uh-oh. Uh, maybe I should have married... Oh, uh, no. Okay. So he's 14. Three-star command. Nice. So this is Jonas's son. Because his mother is French, she's turned him into a Catholic. Okay, so the Turks have moved up another army there. But I think we should be able to take some territory in Georgia. We're going to be able to get my assassins to stop that. But I didn't realize that there's a high trait if you marry a different religion princess that they could become that. Oh no. Is this what the Pope has planned all along? Make <laughs> the Byzantine... Roman Empire Catholic. You can't change religion in this mod, can you? Oh, that's a lot of units there, though. I think we're good. It was only 600. Because in... Uh, what is it? In Rome 1, you can change religion. You can go from pagan to Catholic in... Or Christian. In the Barbarian Invasion DLC. Okay, so do the Turks want peace? We're bordering up near Georgia now. So we've taken some core Caucasus territory. We might push into that Azerbaijan region, but we'll have to see. Okay, I didn't think that marrying the co-emperor to a French woman would be that bad. Um, because technically he's already half Hungarian. Um... Yikes, that could be really, really bad. I wonder if all the kids would be Catholic. Hmm. I don't know, we do have Rome. Would they change the state religion? I think it's it's secretly Catholic. Yeah. Maybe I should have found a Serbian or a Georgian or Kievan Rus princess, potentially. Alright, still keeping an eye on. Cairo. We just need to move more Orthodox priests down in. Also have to wait for martial law to subside. Uh, what were we doing here? Oh, right. So, we were sieging with the one unit, but it got bounced. So now we're just going to have to straight up besiege with the Emperor. And then hopefully here today we're going to have the Siege of Venice. We're going to move up an army there just to stop, because there's a lot of bridges and narrow ways. We probably could get some siege equipment as well. It's, we've got the money. Let's do that. That could help us out. Just expensive. 
All right. Welcome to the top of the turn. Oh, we've had a revolt in Cairo. Oh, it didn't spawn like a rebel army. It spawned a damn... Massive Cairo stack. Oh, half a stack. That's annoying as. I had to move Pamphronos out because there's a plague going on. Okay, bringing up some more military forcements to Hamadan. We can probably move those priests north as well. There is a little bit of orthodox belief here. As this was a former Georgia settlement, probably. Yeah, so as you can see, we're actually pushing into far western Iran in the lands of Persia. I'm surprised how mountainous that border is. Okay, back down south. Um, we were trying to go against the last of the Fatimids here, but... That rebellion in Cairo has complicated things. So, Zeno Kaminos, one of the Emperor's cousins, is dealing with this. Alright, they have moved up an army, but they're not going to come in time. So, we're going to manually play this one. Emperor Jonas against a 75-year-old Venetian. We outnumber them by about a thousand, but Venice is a large city at the end of the day. Of Germanic princely blood. Really? Venetian. Partition. Anyway, let's get stuck in. Shouldn't be too overly complicated this siege. Let's give out some orders. Yeah, sometimes you get RNG'd on settlements that you can push up from. It's not too bad, but just a huge city. We'll have to be a little bit cautious as the majority of this army build is made up of spearmen. We have one unit of Norman sergeants, which is really nice. Our play style and army build in this series has been quite conducive to heavy spearmen. So having a recruitment pool of Norman sergeants as we've taken large swaths of what was the Kingdom Norman of uh, the, <laughs> the Norman Kingdom of Sicily is uh, a nice touch. We have eight archers as well. We'll move them up to try and arc their shots. Our men have reached the walls with their but Emperor Jonas, 70 plus years of age. 20 or so battles. Absolute Chad, still commanding. Okay, let's move up. Oh, they're pouring hot burning oil down there. And then we'll sack and try and hold Venice. Now, Venice is a little bit of a weird city to hold as it's a little bit isolated from Verona. And then we'll make plans and preparations to bring that city under heel. We're gonna need a lot of units for that. I'm not even gonna lie. They've built it up into a, I think it could be a fortress slash citadel. It's gonna take a lot of Roman bodies. As it just has multiple gateways, I'm assuming. Okay, we're surging. Up onto the walls for the dream and conquest of the United Italy. We've been the dominant power in the peninsula. I still think we're at war with Sicily. I don't know what's going on with them. Okay, let's uh, get some of my archers to help out on the walls here. Like, yeah, fight. Look at that cluster. That's kind of insane. Okay, the gateway's about to break, so we've moved up my soldiers preemptively. Yep, grab everyone, drop the battering ram, surge, flood on into Venice. Let's get these merchants! <laughs> Feel kind of bad. Venice have, had a, had, have, a, have actually had a really good campaign. Usually they're not this strong. It's very RNG who sort of dominates and owns the peninsula. Sometimes Venice, sometimes the HRE, sometimes Pisa is the dominant power. I've even seen the French come into here. But that's the sandbox experience of Total War. Gotta love it. Alright, so we've got some spearmen holding here. Arch is doing well. Give grace to God. 
We have the enemy Can't ball. see us losing this one. Just a little bit grindy at the moment. Dealing with these blobs. Okay. Since we're not favoured to win, but I'm not too sure about that. Mm, starting to swing around. A lot more of these spearmen have silver armor. So a slight upgrade. Some of them look different. Our archers are nearly out of ammunition though. Which is not good. But Venice is going to be an absolute jewel of a city to take. Flowing trade on that eastern seaboard. All the way to Constantinople. Beautiful. Alright, we've broken through those units holding the gateway. And, yeah. We're coming on in. Slowly making our way to the town square. Just need to deal with this one unit there. We've pretty much won on the walls. Okay, let's... Uh, try and move everyone into the town square to initiate the countdown. Okay, let's reform that slightly. Oh, it just did it. Okay, they've... Oh, that's annoying. It ticked for a second. And then it just got them all to move in, so they're going to fight to the absolute death. Bunch of cavalry there. Not going to be able to do too much. Can we try and reform that a bit better? We do have some archers with minimal ammunition. I don't know how well they're going to do, though. Okay, let's give out some attack orders here. Still 50-50. Just need to whittle them down. I can't imagine they're going to hold for much longer. They still have two units of their general's bodyguard, though. Alright, try and flank with you now. Hit them from all sides. Okay, just fighting to the absolute bitter end here. The countdown's being initiated. We're fighting to the last Venetian. And the capital will be ours. In hindsight, for them, they probably didn't need to attack us. They probably could have gone against Pisa. <laughs> They did have a Konia, but they sort of united against us, unfortunately. Just finishing off the last of them here. Perfect. A nice, clean, surgical victory for the Romans. We've lost a bit, yeah, but that's okay. We are going to be able to recuperate it. Wow, 1400's quite a bit. Yikes. Sieges are costly. Um, yeah, let's burn it. <laughs> Alexios Vanquisher too. Very nice. The other factions aren't too happy, obviously. We can move that army in now. We'll try and replenish and repair where we can. Let's build a small Orthodox church to help us out. His command's gone down massively, though. Six star now from ten. It's because he's so old and senile. The old man really shouldn't be order resolving with him. We might just have to manually play. Oh, here comes the Holy Roman Empire. We've got an alliance with them. They've pushed two full stacks, so maybe they can go for Verona. They, can, I don't care. They can have it. They can chip away at that monstrosity of a castle. Uh oh. This is Georgia. They want an alliance. Uh, sure. Is it because we're bordering them now? Yeah, why not? Our relations are poor. Our reputation is despicable. Our power is supreme, though. They are our orthodox brothers. Sure, why not? We've been neutral with them for 91 turns. We'll try and get map information from them. I do want to try and see. 
I would offer military for military as well. Access. For us to move. Okay. Oh. They actually border us in... Crimea, and I didn't even notice. Bamf uh, Pamphronos is... Got the play, even though he's sitting outside. We just need to wait for that to burn out. Oh, Alexandria's got issues now. An admiral died, whatever. Um... Oh, they were at war with the Cumans, and we've still got an alliance with them. Interesting. So where do they... They've got a piece of territory here. So they've sort of pushed to the Western Caucasus. And they don't have that, though. Alright. Um, they do have this, though. They, I guess they took that from the Cumans. Interesting. Let's try and get rid of some of these generals. Oh, that's a really good play. How many generals was that? How many star generals he was? Like five or six? Still being a little bit despicable against the Turks. But I will take the opportunity to farm and grind up our. Assassins, if I can. Okay, let's move the Emperor, co Emperor, back down to Hamadan. And I oh, well, do you want to try and reshuffle those units there, but I don't want them to rebel. Okay, back down in Egypt. Zeno is uh, trying to finish off the last of the Egyptians here that haven't rebelled. Um, let's try and get as many mercenaries as we can just to help us out. Because this is a big settlement. Uh, let's make sure we put the most with him. Uh, there we go. That's a bit better. Oh, there's a 14 there. Make sure it's like a proper full strength, full stack. Nice. 3,000 against 500. 6 to 1-ish. Uh, two generals inside. They do have a better command than Xeno. But we should be okay. Nice. Only a couple hundred lost. They mustn't have much more territory left, surely. Let's burn it. Resistance is futile. Okay. Let's build a church there. And then I guess we have to deal with this rebellion in the north. Which is annoying. Um, I do want to try and... Move some of those units north to help. We probably could build a watchtower somewhere. Oh, it's not in our territory. Oh, I just went over the line. Well, that's incredibly annoying. I guess I'll just move you back to give us some line of sight. Nice. We do have the money now, so why not? Right, we'll wait for more, reinforce, more reinforcements to come up. We're just having issues in Cairo and Egypt. Oh, they've moved an army towards Milan. Interesting. Uh, we can't get any more units here for whatever reason. So let's try and reshuffle some of these to Venice. We've recently conquered it, so for now we'll be okay. Try and more move more units north. But we're still very much relying on mercs. We've got a marriage offer here. So the last of Alexios's line, we can marry him to Kala... Kalmadi wait, Kalamadios of Constantinopolis. I like that last name. That's good. He's of Constantinople. Twenty-two. God, this line is so tragic. <laughs> uh, one of his son-in-laws died of the plague. Great son-in-law got assassinated. I don't know what's going to happen to this guy. Alright, so I moved the co-emperor Jonas back to Hamadan, and we're going to try and push back some of these smaller Turkic armies. And then, I guess, we push for Al-Alamut. Alamut. Okay. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, we moved the general here. So those skirmishes didn't... Rebel or anything, but I think we might reshuffle them here though and bring Trapsos in. I might look to sue for peace with them actually. Not interested, but it does push it to peace, so maybe if I offer them some money it might work. 6,000. 
Oh, you're kidding me. They actually accepted. Oh, wow. Um, sure. We're thrown back... Uh, oh, I don't know. Four or five stacks or so, maybe? And we've taken one piece of territory, and we've just defended our own. More or less. Okay. Alright, we're having mega issues here. A couple of small armies have popped up. Unfortunately, Alexandria rebelled. So, let's... Make sure we got a full stack here. We might have to manually play these again. Depending on the order resolve, we'll see. Ugh. We burnt them and built them up as well. It's just so annoying. When you've already conquered this territory, you have to reconquer it again. But I don't know. Some territories are more hostile than others, so bear with me. Let's make sure we got like numerically heaps there. Right. Also, it's annoying that it wasn't just like rebel, it's actually faction. So they're basically getting free units. Put some more siege equipment there. We might need some more units, to be fair. Oh, hang on. That's a bit better. Um, I might be able to get some more units from the Levant, potentially. Okay, that should help. Get some more there. I would accept peace, but I want those two territories back if we could. Rejected. Maybe we moved too far south too quickly to try and wrap and finish them off. So I wanted Alexandria at least. No, okay. So be it. Just a little bit of a divergent. But at least we can replenish and repair on the Seljuk border. For now, peace is over there. Okay, now we're just trying to hold our territory here in northern Italy as well. Having some minor issues. Alright, so the plan is to go for Verona eventually. They've got a full stack outside. Costly army, yep. Death stalks the land. Uh, he's 51, I'm uh, sure. And now we've got bad stuff going on here. Hang on. Well, I guess he can move back now because we don't have to deal with the Seljuks. He can garrison there. And what do I do with these units now? I guess I move them north, potentially. We'll try and replenish and repair here. So, we've had a bit of a ceasefire with the Seljuks for now. I can't imagine it lasting that long. I'm trying to think if I should move the co-emperor. Maybe to Egypt. Or maybe back to Italy eventually. Uh, these guys, I guess I head them to Egypt because we're having problems. Okay, so... The Egyptians have moved some units up from Alexandria, so let's just make sure we have more forces here. Okay, let's try and hit some of these units that are sitting on the outskirts for whatever reason. And clean that up a bit. Right, those reinforcements... <laughs> I say reinforcements. It's the garrison that fled from Alexandria, really. Okay. Right, now we're good, I think. 4,000 against their 1,000. Good. I wanted to auto-resolve it. It would pain me to retake Cairo. It's a brutal city to take. Alrighty, back up in the north. I think it's time to go against Venice in Verona now. Now, thankfully, half of their army is sitting outside. Oh my god, it's a citadel. Yikes. So... We'll isolate the garrison inside, we'll move up the Emperor, and oh, thankfully there's no general there, so we're going to take the order resolve on this one, a couple hundred. Uh, let's make sure we get rid of them as well. Oh, okay. Well, we'll manually siege this one out, 
And I reckon we're gonna have to play this one. I want one battering ram. I want more ladders if I can. Um, and we'll consolidate together. We might bring some more units up potentially. We'll see. Um, do the Sicilians want peace? We actually found them. <laughs> they're in North Africa here. Surprising. And they're going to accept. Uh, can I get some map information? No. So this must be their last settlement here. That's where they were. <laughs> I don't think they even have Tunisia. Uh, can I get map information from the Serbs? No. We've got a bunch of diplomats spread around everywhere. Can we get map from... Ooh. We'll accept that and do the uh, cheeky cheese. So let's cancel that. Oh, wow. They've done really well in this series. The Moors taking Toulouse and Tunisia. We'll do the same with the Seljuks as well. Okay. So they had a pretty good campaign until we got involved. Damn, had an alliance with them. Still want to try and retake Alexandria. That's annoying that we lost it. Oh, there's some big cities there. Oh, wow. Look at that. Like, it's like nearly a fort wall. Or sediments. Oh, so they do have Baku. I thought it was Turku or whatever it's called. And they even have more territory up there. <laughs> okay. It's nearly like realistically accurate in real life. Georgia and <laughs> Azerbaijan there together. Interesting. Nestled between the two. Okay, so... The siege equipment has been built. I'm going to move the Emperor's cousin out, Nikitas. And he's going to be able to have more reinforcements in. Okay, that should be enough though. Ooh, if I go with a night attack, it doesn't bring in reinforcements. I think it's worth playing this one. So we got 3,000 against their 1,500. Alright, let's fight this one upon the battlefield. And take Venice's biggest castle. Snowy Citadel. Let's go. Man, we're getting to the stage in the campaign that we're nearly 100 turns in. And some of these castles are just <laughs> absolutely massive. And cities are huge at this stage in the campaign. So, we tend to get super high casualties. And we are using spearmen predominantly still. Alright, this army build, two units of mercenary spears, two Norman. The rest just Byzantine. Uh, actually, in hindsight, I sh probably should have built two battering rams. I think we're going to be okay. Just need to make sure it doesn't get destroyed. Okay, so that 500's coming in. Do I allow him to like just try and shoot it out? Okay. Look at this lone soldier here. <laughs> What's this? Uh, what's that? Um, Skatari swordsman doing? <laughs> Bit weird. Okay, we're moving up slowly. Our archers are here as well. One into crossbows. Walls are no match for valor and force of arms. All right, here comes the battering ram. And then Venice only has. Milan, from what I can see. And I'm assuming they've got some Illyrian territory, potentially. In and around Serbia. So, I think what I might do is I might actually move Emperor Co-Emperor Jonas maybe back to Constantinople. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm still umming and ahhing if I should go further against the Seljuks. They surprised, attacked us. We pushed their armies back, and we took some territory. But do we want to be going into those far-flung regions in the east when we want to restore a lot of what was the Roman Empire? We might be better off focusing our armies on that. I don't know. We still need to keep a massive garrison. And units in the east, but do we need to have key figures and family members there? I don't know. We are moving Pamphronos 
It will be... What is he? Third in line, technically, now. Eventually. We'll probably move him to Egypt, because we're still having some issues there. But, once we retake Alexandria, we have, for all intensive purposes, created the Eastern Roman Empire. And maybe even some more territory. Okay, they're pushing up well. We might move my archers up in a sec. The gateway is broken. We'll send the five infantry units sitting outside in. And ideally, I might try and get my archers on the walls. So they can shoot down into the castle and up and over as well. But yeah, taking uh, Italy has been a massive undertaking. Easier said than done. Still thankful we haven't had a crusade called against us. That could have been an issue. Okay, we're doing a lot better on the gateway and the two side walls. Not so much on that left there. What's that reinforcing army doing, I wonder? It's going to eventually make its way in. It is unwise to praise the day before sunset, but our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. Bunch of cavalry just sitting back there in the second road for some reason. A little bit weird. bugging out a little bit. Ideally, I want to try and get the battering ram to that second wall. So it's only two by the look of it. Thankfully, there's not a third. Could have been interesting. Oh. The plan was to move my archers there to get their shots off, but an infantry unit's come up there, even another one. Okay, this is going to be a little bit sketchy, this siege. Three of our infantry are buckling. Some of them have drawn their swords, but it looks like some of them are going to be able to fire. Oh my god, they're just trying to go against this cavalry there. Offensive sieges are always costly, and this is definitely one of them. We might need to move the Emperor in. Maybe. Not yet, but at some point we might. Okay. There's so much cavalry there. Oh my god, my spearmen just melted away. Okay, the reinforcements have arrived. Okay, let's get down and try and push if we can. Let's move the battering ram up. There's a couple units tied down there. Try and get my archers to pepper them. Three 
38% lost. We've taken out 44. But the thing is, we outnumbered them by a couple thousand. We're struggling to get past the first rung. How are we going to deal with the second? That is the issue. Okay, we're moving up now, which is a bit better. Oh my god, look how much cavalry's there. Yikes. The enemy are badly blooded. They have lost half their men. The battle is in our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, victory will be ours. We might not need the battering ram then. Lord We've managed to we push through that gateway. Ah, oh, but they're just holding it though. Okay, the reinforcements are here. It's probably... Uh, can we move them off, maybe? Well, these guys aren't even shooting, so let's get up here. It's still way too close for my liking. I think it's the cavalry. Really heavily armoured. They're not necessarily... Charging or cycle charging. No, okay. Oh my god. My infantry is just completely buckled. I don't know how we're going to win this. It is unwise to praise the day before sunset. But our we'll move my archers up and try and get them to do their best, but I don't fucking know. This might be a uh, GG's. Okay, we're going to move the Emperor up. A little bit risky. Particularly in his old age, but he's fif he's got 51 in his bodyguard. Move up for support, more or less. Just to help the... Reinforcing army, because they seem to have more. Okay, just try and diversify some of that firing pattern a bit. 67 to their 72. Oh, I just don't think we're going to get over the line. We'll sit the Emperor there. Move him back slightly, just need to be careful. I don't want to lose him. I wouldn't bring him in. If I desperately didn't need to win this. This is going to go to the absolute bitter end. This is an epic Venetian last stand. Okay, yep, nice. I can see a good amount of spearmen there coming for the reinforcing army. They're now broken, good. Get the archers to focus on the next. So we've only got a hundred or so that we're directly commanding now. And, oh, they are... The thing is, they are getting a little bit of cavalry movement bonus there, charging down. Oh, they just got capitulated there. They're routing. I see sergeants that are doing really, really well. Oh, now they've closed the gateway on them. Oh, there's so many in that town square still. Oh, my. Okay, I think we're good. 
Let's move up again. Start chipping away. The Emperor's in here, so he should be able to... Through some... I don't know. Level of osmosis. Give some morale to those... Reinforcing troops, because they've, they've still got half their army there. They've still got 600. So they've still got 700 troops in play. What is happening? Oh, I can't equip the battering ram because they've taken it. But also, I don't think I have enough men on it. General's bodyguard there. Start chipping away at that. Also, has that gateway been firing at us? Like, there's two big drum towers there. They've probably been peppering us a bit. Alright, so... Here goes our 77 archers <laughs> that have drawn their swords. They're out of ammunition, so I guess they just got to go for this. Just need to wait for the damn AI to... Help us out. Just moving up the general slightly. He still has 51 in his bodyguard, so it's still a good amount. Continue to get my archers to hit this. They're charging down here now again. Will these guys hold? There's 120. Barely. Oh my god. There's 16. I'm going to move in the Emperor. We've got 51. Surely should be able to deal with 14. We've only got 10 units left. Victory will be ours. If we can somehow get their general, that'll be good. I don't know if he's even in this one. 49. Okay, I think we're good. Right. Oh, no! Wait, no, we got him. Oh, God. It was their general. Oh, my God. Panicked there. Right, move you back. I think we're good. Move back, move back. Yep. Oh no, they... D what? There was no one there! Oh, they did get him! <laughs> oh no! He is a bit squishy. The faction leader dies. Oh, god damn it. There's 42 in his bodyguard. He didn't die in the charge. I think he must have got taken out by an archer. There was no one there. Ah, uh, now we can't do a rally. Oh, that's GG's, I think. To be fair. Or was he 73? <laughs> the main problem is if your faction leader dies in battle, it sends a massive morale debuff throughout the realm. We already, if he like dies rather than, he, if he dies in an action rather than dies peacefully, um, we had really bad issues when the earthquake happened. Uh, rip. So it looks like we got a new emperor. Co Emperor Jonas in the Far East. Well, lucky we've been planning on moving him. He probably needs to get to this it Italy front and continue where his uncle left off. I'm assuming Pamphronos is probably co-emperor now, his son and heir. There's not much we can do now that they've closed the gateway on us. Although this is going to end in defeat, it's probably going to be a Pyrrhic victory. For the Venetians. We've crushed a lot of them. Can they withstand losing this much? Okay, so... I don't know what's happening. We can't equip... This. That's a lot of units back there. I don't think we can get past this second breach. The AI is trying to get some ladders and rams up there. But... What a way to go out. Damn Venetians. Or oh, actually we ran out of time. That was a long ass battle. Holy shit. We've only got two minutes remaining. That was nearly... Yeah, that was a full battle. Uh, I don't think there was much we really could have done differently there. It would have been just withdrawing the Emperor. But the thing is, it's like... He's going to die anyway, so... Yeah. Oof. Alexios the Great. R.I.P. Average defeat. So we have 500 remaining. No, it was more like 600 remaining to their 600. So we basically traded. But, yep, faction leader killed. Alexios is no more. They got rid of the captives. 
Our force has melted away. Oh, Nikitas Kaminos oh, died as well. Oh. So, Jonas not only lost his uncle, he lost his cousin as well. Well, that line has pretty much died out now. It's only the female. But Alexios, with no male heirs, it's going to bounce to his brother's son. Yeah, Nikitas died as well. Because that's the other Kaminos line, the only male line. So really, we just need to focus on this small family tree. So Jonas, 51, pretty decent authority. He's named his firstborn son, Pamphronos, who's now 16. That's a good thing. We can probably look to marry him off, off but he's Catholic, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I guess the Byzantine Roman Empire is uh, Catholic at the moment. Well, I suppose we head you westward, sitting in the Far East... It's probably not a bad idea. Dude's 51, though. He's not young. There wasn't much of an age difference between the two. So we've got our third emperor now. That line has died off. Then we've got the female line here. Andronicus the Merciless. His son, Jonas, has now inherited the throne. And Pamphronos. So we'll probably look to marry him off as well. He was going to Egypt to help out in the rebellion. But he might be better suited going elsewhere to be honest okay so although we lost that battle the emperor did enough that we can rally a small army from our territory in northern italy and push straight again and we should be able to take verona so although it was a defeat it's we did so much damage it's nearly a victory in my books okay so they have moved up wait what they moved up a full stack, but it's not coming in? Oh, that's bizarre. We'll take the victory off. Why did they attack me then? What? How did that full stack not come in? That was so close. That must have been a bug. Because why would they attack me during the end turn? Whatever. I'm going to take Verona. <laughs> I'm going to sit here then. Oh, yeah. Okay. So... Appios. The Beautiful. French. So this is the ah, oh, this is the emperor's second-born son. Legitimate Hungarian Greek French relations. He's even wearing blue. He's Catholic, unfortunately. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have married the emperor to a French princess. Well, I guess there's a French empress on the throne. Okay, still dealing with public order. Yikes! All over the empire now because this is the first turn that we've had a new emperor. So. We will need to drop the taxes a bit, and hopefully we don't have a full-scale revolt, full-scale rebellion. Most of this is on normal, so we can change a lot of it. Move you back to Akka. We just need to withstand a little bit of it. Alright, so Zeno is going to try and push for Alexandria again. Unfortunately, his uh, brother Nikitas died to Venetians. It's kind of a shame. And still dealing with pretty bad public order here. We're trying to get more units where we can. But the Emperor needs to get over here. Quick, fast. It shouldn't last for too long. But it's definitely something we need to keep an eye on. But we're under a reign of a new Emperor. Jonas II. Following male preference primogenitor at the moment. Which I think we'll just do. It's fine. So we're still at war with the Venetians and the Fatimids. I would actually nearly offer peace if they're interested. Ceasefire. And it's unknown, which is annoying. Sometimes it works if you offer money straight after. Are they interested? 7,000 is quite a bit. No. All right, let's get the emperor on the move. We might even get him to recruit and pick up an army from Constantinople. It's going to take him a little bit of time to get there. Agent detected. Oh, a jihad's been called on Basra. Yikes. Oh, that's not good. Re that's really bad. We're probably at war with Rum and probably the other Muslim factions. Still dealing with a lot of civil disorder. I could split them because the Emperor has more movements. We're slowly but surely making our way to Constantinople. Pamphronos is already there. So let's get some swordsmen. And then probably... Uh, a unit of Saxon Huskals. They can sit there for now. 
All right. I've also scouted out some princesses. So we've got a couple of options here. I do want to try and get Pamphronos married off as quickly as possible. He's at the ripe old age of 17. Now, I found this Orthodox princess from Serbia. She's only 5-star. However, there's a whopping 10-star princess here. She's 26, but she's from Pisa and another Catholic. I think I'm going to marry him to her. Oh, wait. They want to Bologna, Florenzi, and Pisa. Because that will allow us to strengthen our Italian claim. And she's a fantastic princess, so we should be able to get some really fantastic traits. But unfortunately, we might have another secret Catholic. That cost a bit, so we're going to have to stop that. So... You do want to try and marry into other houses if you can, because you get some really nice traits. So she's noble, utterly manipulative, man manipulative. She's lovely, though. And she's of Pisan blood. So hopefully, all those brutal wars <laughs> we've had with Pisa will subside for now. And now we have an alliance with them. They sit in Genoa, and I'm assuming Sardinia and Corsica as well. So this guy is of Greek princely blood, Hungarian, French, and now his children will probably have peas in blood as well. So we're well and truly assimilating into Western Europe. We probably could switch the religion to Catholic, realistically. Venice doesn't want peace, which is a shame. Can I give you some money for peace? I'll give you all my money that i got now. Nah, still not interested. Yikes. Alright, so this place bloody rebelled. Still constantly dealing with these Egyptian rebellions. That's another thing as well in this mod. Some areas are just prone to rebellions. Maybe it's a script. Maybe it's realistic. We can't seem to quell them overly too much. I guess the populations are just massive. Alright, back in Alexandria now. Okay. Should be able to take this one. What, is this the second time we've retaken Alexandria? Nice. Now Egypt is fully back under Roman occupation. Now, uh, sure. Hamburg gets rights. Interesting. Now, uh, we've had a rebellion in Venice. And to top that off, we're at war with the Moors and the Seljuks. Now, luckily, we've got a big army there. And we probably need to move up a general. My god. I think it's in combination with a new emperor. But also, like, just some of this territory is essentially hard to... ...core. Alright. Oh, no. We lost one of our guys to an assassin. Alright. Um, oh, okay, that Seljuk Jihad army is really close by. I think we're better off just to allow them to take Basra, because if we perpetually leave that active... You don't look very Seljuk, but whatever. Anyway. Okay. So, we're going to move this general up to help out. Verona's not too happy. Okay. Now, thankfully, the HRE is sort of sitting there protecting us. I think they have a core for Verona. So maybe they're kind of looking to want to try and get it. Alright, let's move everyone up. Uh, I probably could do with some mercenaries, to be fair. We've already played the battle for Venice. I'm not playing it again. But <laughs> to make sure you get a clear order resolve, you just need to hit them with overwhelming force. We'll burn it to the ground again. And then hopefully we can hold it this time. Now, funnily enough, Pisa has actually attacked Venice, and they're besieging Milan. They weren't at war with them before, maybe because we've got an alliance with them now. They seem more bold and confident to do so. I'm interested to, like, give you heaps of money, Venice. Nah, still not interested. Because if Pisa takes Milan, that's the Italian peninsula fully under our control. We'll need to move some units back to Verona. They must have some territory in Illyria that I can't see, I'm assuming. Or maybe they have Sardinia or Corsica, potentially. 
All right, let's try and hold Venice completely now. Let's continue on. So the Seljuks are going to take Basra, and we're going to allow the Jihad to be successful, and then we'll move back in. Oh, what? The? Did that army just get crushed? No, he just died. Oh my god. The sawmill's been invented. Hell yeah. The compass. The Muslims used the compass. No more martial law in Cairo. Missing funds. We're making heaps of money, but it's just... Yes. Conquering this territory. Okay, so... The, yeah, I think what you want to do is let the... Damn it. I'm losing a lot of generals over here to the Seljuks. Uh, we got a couple units. We've got a couple generals we could potentially bring in. Uh, Macedonius Caminos. Oh, he's the third-born son of the Emperor. Nice. He's now of age. I'd like to get those guys married off. If we could. Yeah, I think you're better letting the Jihad be successful instead of, like, th sitting there throwing back multiple armies. Just so they stop. So, we're only at war with the Moors and the Seljuks again. So, we're going to re-siege this. And try and take Basra back. We'll try and move a general down here. I think we've got an Angelinos. Yeah, he can probably come down there with cavalry as a protective issue. But guess what, guys? We've broken 101 turns for this particular campaign. It's 1182 AD. Let's try and negotiate with some of those Muslim factions. The Moors are more than happy to take peace and get their trade rights back. Um, unfortunately, Pisa got thrown back. Oh, and finally, the Venetians want peace. You want heaps of money, though. Try and get trade with them. Because now I just think we need to consolidate Emperor Jonas II's rule. I swear there's a settlement here. Oh, I can't see it. Somewhere in the fog of war. Okay. Um, can't negotiate with the Fatimids. I wouldn't mind P. Oh, no. Actually, I don't think I'll make peace with the Seljuks because I kind of want to take Basra back. Then I'll probably sue for peace again. Interesting that a Jihad got called there. Okay, so we're nearly assembling everyone in Constantinople. So the Emperor and his two boys heading on over. We can build a watchtower here as well. And we'll eventually get them to Italy. Now, Pamphronos, firstborn son of Air and Air has arrived in Italy. And is going to move up here to help out. But thankfully, we're not at war with anyone in the north now. We're still at war with the Seljuks and the uh, Fatimids. Well, unfortunately on that note, it's time to end the uh, video here. My god, we've been playing for a couple of hours here. I don't know how long... Uh, god, two hours and a half this recording session's been. Once I edit and chop it down, it should be... I'll try to get to an hour or so, but it might be a bit longer. But anyway, thank you very much for watching episode 19. Hell of an episode, so much happened. New Emperor... Um, still dealing with con countless rebellions. Yeah, I, I guess, let me know, guys. Is there, on the harder difficulties, is there more of a resistance to occupation, essentially? Are there, like, some areas of the map which are just going to perpetually rebel? Um, I'm finding it really hard to, like, knuckle down Egypt and particularly some of that territory in northern Italy as well. Or was it more so to do with a new change in leadership but unfortunately on that note it's time to end the video here i might take a break for this particular campaign um i'm still uploading daily so there's going to be something but i don't really know what to do from here we're gonna to have to wait for a bit um to consolidate for the most part but i don't really have any ambition to go any further east i just want to try and hold my gains against the seljuks i've taken all of Egypt. I don't know... I don't really care about utterly destroying the Fatimid faction. I think they have some territory down in the Arabian Peninsula. Um, but we could go after them. But I don't know. We just need to sort of hold in Egypt. Like, we've got so many stacks held down. All of Italy is fully under our control. Bar Milan. That's under Venice occupation. But Pisa might actually make a play for it. Or potentially the HRE. We'll have to see. But we'll see if any wars pop up. But, um, yeah, if you want to see more episodes, the best way to ensure it is just to support this series. Leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment for the algorithm, the algo. 
But anyway, thanks guys. Make sure to take care of, your, care of yourselves. I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> My voice is getting sore. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simsy. Hope you're enjoying this campaign as much as I am. I'm having an absolute blast. I love playing as the Romans. All right, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Goodbye.